So there have been 26 James Bond movies made since 1962. Uh, turns out, if you've watched one, you've kind of watched them all. They typically start with a fantastic chase, where James defies the laws of gravity, bends the laws of physics, and comes out victorious. We then see a more colorful side of James. And then you're introduced to the supervillain, who is a really, really bad guy. And it turns out this bad guy has had a devious plan for years to end the planet. Nothing smaller than that, just end it all. What then follows is an epic battle between good and evil. James wins, of course. World peace is restored. And then James goes back to doing what he does best, which is modeling for suits, for cars, for, for watches, for sunglasses, what have you. But if you're like me, my favorite part of every James Bond movie is that five-minute visit to Q's labs. Because you see, that's where I learned about the latest cars before I saw them on the roads. That's where I learned about the GPS before each one of us had it in our pockets. That's where I even learned about artificial intelligence before it became the sexy thing that it is today. The reason I bring this up to you is because it's those tools, the data center infrastructure, the underlying infrastructure on which all of the applications that you folks write, that is analogous to the tools that Q builds in his labs. Okay? And that's what I'm here to talk about. My name is Didi. I head up data center marketing at Cisco. For the last five years, I've noticed there's something wrong with my title. And the reason is there's almost nothing centered about data anymore. Data is everywhere. It's on your watches, it's on your laptops, it's on your phones, it's on toasters, on thermometers, on sensors. It's everywhere. So the basic definition of data centers has changed. My definition of data center is where data exists, which is everywhere. And for those of you in the audience that are working on machine learning and artificial intelligence, man, are you guys putting that data through some torture tests? And why not? Because it's been said data is the new oil. And so you and I are in the business, or should be in the business, of making better oil refineries so that you and I and every shareholder of our companies become rich like those oil shakes. Right? So we're seeing a massive distribution of data. And while this is happening, there's another massive trend, which is to do with application evolution which Doug just talked about. And I think nobody captured or predicted it better than our friend Peter Levine at Andreessen Horowitz when he talks about how applications went from being centralized, mainframes, client server becomes distributed, the world we live in today, mobile cloud, back to centralized, and the future is going to be more and more about edge intelligence, edge native applications. So data is being distributed. Applications are being redesigned. What's needed? is an evolution in the underlying infrastructure on which these applications run. And that's what we've been up to at Cisco. We call this architecture intent-based networking. Why? Because it's the network that connects everything. Every sensor, every camera, every device, every human, every data center, every cloud. The network sees it all, and the network doesn't lie. So if there was a way to extract all of this data from the network and give it back to the data scientists, to the application developers, that would be a good thing, right? So my favorite example of one of the products we've built to help in this architecture is called Cisco Tetration Analytics. I know, I don't like the name either. But turns out, it's a really cool number. Okay? Tetration is the next hyper operation after exponentiation. So addition, multiplication, exponentiation, tetration. Now you know this product was named by engineering, not marketing. Anyway, turns out tetration does this really cool thing called application dependency maps. The circle that you see, all the points along the circumference, those are the applications, which could be running in AWS, in your data center, in a colo, all the way on a sensor in an oil field in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Tetration finds out how these applications talk to each other, how much they talk to each other, when should they be talking to each other, and why are they talking to each other. 
And if he can feed this information back to the application developers, it can really help in increasing the application performance, uh, making applications more reliable, and making applications a lot more secure. Another example is a server which we just announced earlier this week. It's called a UCS 240 ML, another product named by engineering. Um, it is really custom built from ground up uh, for machine learning and deep learning workloads. We brought this into the market just on Monday this week, along with Google and NVIDIA. Um, if you've not had a chance, please go take a look. It's on the show floor. All right, I know I'm out of time, so let me leave you with these three thoughts, more like predictions. Every application is going to be ML-enabled. Every application is going to be AI-powered. Just like what happened when smartphones came out, we had to rewrite all applications to be mobile first. That's what's happening to applications today. Data is going to continue growing exponentially. And you saw a whole bunch of figures from the speaker before me. It's going to be more and more distributed. And so what's needed is a new infrastructure architecture to respond to these changes in application and in data. And so now you know what we've been cooking in the Q labs at Cisco. And we're working really, really hard to make each one of you a better James Bond in your organization. Thank you. <laughs>